Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Final Cut Presents the Director's Cut Podcast. As always, with me is my guest, Mikey. So today, it's actually a little bit different. We're going to do a bit of news to begin with. I've had my other half arrange a little Q&A for us. So that'll be interesting. So, first of all, Mikey, aside from uh, having allergies like me, how are you? I'm good. I pretty much just woke up, so it's like only uh, 10, 14 a.m. where I am. Yeah. Oh, I miss Phoebe from last week. I want to do that again. That was fun. I want to do that again. Right, so, before we go into the Q&A, which which we've actually had a little bit of a look at, so we haven't really had that much time. Uh, it's a bit, a bit of interesting news, actually. Um, I never thought I would actually hear this coming from coming from a Spider-Man uh, movie set, but rumor has it Jamie Fox is allegedly reprising his role of Electro in Spider-Man Three. So that's interesting. I'm actually pretty hyped for that because I felt like he's got the short end of the stick in the last Spider-Man movie. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest with us. Say hi, Helena. But I'm pretty hyped for it because uh, yeah. I love this the fight scene with Electro and him and the Spidey are going at it. Yeah. So I'm hoping this will start like their own Spider Verse because I know that's what Tom Holland's been requesting. And seeing yeah. like Andrew and Toby Maguire all together could be pretty huge. Could be, but it just depends how we're going to do it. So we kind of are kind of are glad it's happening, but obviously we don't know anything about Spider Man Three yet. So it's just kind of we have a bit of hope, but we're not too sure about anything else now um before we get on to the next part i just want to say uh there's been the witches uh well Dahl, um book has been redone starring anne hathaway octavia spencer and stanley tucci the trailer dropped this week it is it looks absolutely brilliant but i should just point out i literally had no hope for this because the 80s movie with angelica houston basically was one of those that shouldn't be shouldn't be messed with should not be redone so it would actually be interesting to see how the movie goes i don't think i don't think any, everyone who watches it on hbo max in america and canada has got that long to wait but obviously in england we don't have it yet so we'll just have to wait and see how it goes but i do like the look of it you know, they're always remaking movies they really shouldn't remake. Like, The Craft's getting a sequel, and uh, yeah. apparently some of the actresses don't want to get involved with the new one. It's kind of like uh, uh, um, Charmed. The old ones didn't get asked back, and they wouldn't. I don't think they would have done that anyway. I haven't even I've watched, I don't think I've even watched an episode of a new one yet, because my loyalty and devotion is to Alyssa, Rose, and Holly. So, I mean, I might watch it just to give it a shot, but Unless it's like really good, I will not watch it. I won't really watch The Craft because that was just brilliant and it shouldn't really have a sequel. The Craft is my wife's favorite movie. We've probably watched like two, three times. And yeah. she actually seems kind of excited for the new one just because of the couple of Easter eggs from the trailer that they showed. Yeah. Like uh, there's Nancy's photo and stuff. Yeah, my sister um, was a fan of that as well. And her best friend was. So we'll have to get their seal of approval over it when it comes out. If we have their seal of approval, then it's worth watching. So it's to be honest with you, it's all been a bit, um, it's all a bit been a bit go today because of everything that's happened. So I'll just start off with ev- with everything that's gone on. Um, uh, Cineworld, who is Britain's biggest uh, cinema chain, and they're actually. Uh, the, the, Whoever Regal, who owns them in America, they're actually the world's second uh, biggest cinema chain. Um, they are closing in the US and UK and Ireland now. Now, there's a bit of conflicting reports because they say it's going to be closed, as in shut forever. But I read one report before we came on, and it says they're basically giving everyone redundancy, and then they hope to reopen in in uh, I think it's April next year. But no offense, but if you shut a door, you shut it permanently until you open it again. Yeah. So if someone says shut the door, you shut the door. You don't just say, can I shut the door, please? And can I have? Can I reopen it when I need to? It's like, no, lock the door, please. 
They're thinking ahead because they think of ways they can remake money as fast as possible to get it flowing again. But technically, given everyone redundancy, which is what the plan is now, <coughs> will end up costing them more than anything. You're also They're... taking away more jobs, which hurts yeah. a lot of people. Because even on unemployment, like not everyone's going to be able to get enough because they only get, I think it's like 50% or something. Yeah. Of their pay. It was eighty percent when we first had a lockdown, but now I think it's gone down to sixty. So just to put that into perspective for those who aren't good with their maths, if you earn say a thousand pounds a month, let's say, basically what you'd have is you'd have six hundred pounds coming in. So if you've got other bills to pay, so you've got a phone bill, you've got if you've got rent or pay a mortgage or anything and shopping as well. Basically, your wage is going to be in on the Monday and gone on the Tuesday. So, it's not really that good. The reason this has come about is because uh, the new James Bond movie has been put back to April next year, which was kind of not what the industry needed because we needed, we had um, Chris Nolan's Tenant, which was supposed to revitalize the cinema goers but it's not done as well as everyone thought it would and now with everything being put back again i mean wonder woman's been put back to christmas i think black widow is still <coughs> next month but i'm not entirely sure because i've not really heard anything about it recently but it's not it's not going well if they keep putting movies back and who's to say that black widow isn't going to get moved from november so that kind of was the straw that broke Cineworld back, which I don't blame them for. But, I mean, Fast 9 was already delayed um, till next year anyway. But now they put that back until, I think it's uh, end, of November, end of May next year, which for Americans or anyone who watches uh, Indie Rating League, it should be the weekend of the Indie 500. That's when it should be released, but obviously... With, with everything that's going on on like a day-by-day -day basis, take it with a pinch of salt and see what happens. Um, just one last bit of news before we do this quiz. Um, as we all know, this is Daniel Craig's last James Bond movie, as we all know. So, rumour has it, um, every, anyone British has been linked with playing him. There's been there's, uh, Idris Elba, Tom Hardy, James Norton, even David Beckham's been not been uh, nominated for it and I'm like why he can't act out the paper bag <coughs> but there is possibly a new fun one in the version of uh, One Direction's Harry Styles even though he denies it and he has um, his odds have been slashed by bookmakers from 100 to 1 to 25 to 1 there's also another rumour that Tom Hardy was actually offered it and he was due to be unveiled next month but because of everything that's gone on that, that idea has been shelved so to be fair, um, Harry Styles does actually have quite good uh, acting chops on him. I mean, I mean, look what happened in uh, Dunkirk. He was cast in that. Everyone was kind of like, why did he cast Harry Styles? But he turned out to be quite good. So he's young as well. So he's got at least another 15 years on him. So that could be another load of James Bond movies he could do. So, But then again, we don't know what's going on until, really, until Daniel Craig's uh, had his last movie out. Honestly, I kind of would like to see Henry Cavill be James Bond. I would, but then again, if you see Man from Uncle, you've seen what he can, what he can be like as James Bond. And so, the same with uh, the what was it, uh, Mission Impossible? You can yeah. see it's got like the fight scene attributes and stuff. But he can leave his he can leave his uh, facial hair at home, well and truly. Yeah, well, have you seen that Sh uh, Nola Holmes movie? Like, you I pretty much see like he's got he's like clean cut and everything. He's like rocking his suit, and yeah. like he, he could pull up on. I think he's he's got the size and the believability that like that he could be a secret agent. He's got the Englishness as well. Let's face it, who doesn't want to have Superman as James Bond? That could actually that's actually quite um, that could be quite history making actually because no one who has played Superman has ever played James Bond before. And uh, it's funny because Adam West was supposed to be uh, Bond, but he turned it down, so he would have been Batman and Bond. Yeah, I think so. Now we get it reversed. Was that on now. the Majesty's Secret Service when George Lazenby did it? I think so. So it'd be reversed here. Instead, now you'd have like Super James Bond, and then they could make little jokes here and there. Yeah, like why aren't you in your blue suit? And you could be just like make comment like blues out this season or something. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, so on that, on that rather quite historical uh, sentiment that it might actually happen, we have a Q and A to do now. I've got the question. I'll just get the questions up. Literally, we have only just found these out twenty minutes ago, so we are abs- Well, I'm absolutely dreading it. I don't know if uh, Fraser is. I so, should be fine. My yeah, allergies so what- are what I dread the most right now. So, yeah, that's true. So. I don't want anybody putting in the comments. He should be in bed, etc. He's here. He's willing to put the time in, and I grant him respect for that. And not to mention, I have uh, serious trouble with hay fever, so I know all about he's going through. So, so first question: How did you first start your podcast series? So, how did I? I think this is more of a question for me. So, how did I start this? Well, well. Uh, well, it's been that long. Um, well, we know someone who, and anyone who's been watching me since I started that will know the answer to this. Uh, Mark, who did used to come on quite a bit, we actually, uh, I actually pitched this idea to him and he was up for it. It was like a movie with a uh, movie segment, but the only thing is, it kind of like once a month is not enough in the movie business. It's kind of like, it's kind of like old news. So the, so the minute you say a bit of news, then about a day later it becomes ancient. So so we've done that, and obviously my partner here has uh, taken over that mantle quite nicely. So that's our first podcast series started. I mean, we do have a wrestling one, but we'll save that for wrestling Q&As. Just bear with my co-host a minute. He's asking for ice cream, so I had oh, to explain it's too early for ice cream. It, it's way too early. It's never too early for a beer, though. That's the problem. Apparently, but... Yeah. All right, then. Um, how was you feeling the first time you did your very first interview? Now, when I did my first interview, I was absolutely nervous as hell. I, I still am. I don't know how... If anyone asks, how can you still be nervous? It's just the case if it happens. It's like... When you drive your the supercar you've always dreamed of, you just go through emotions. It's just a case of, oh my god, I'm touching history. I love this car so much. It just stuff like that just rattles around in your head. So um, it is actually quite uh, quite scary. Now, Fraser hasn't done any uh, movie interviews, but he had he actually had his first uh, wrestling interview uh, last week. He actually it was actually a podcast, but you can class it as an interview because he headed it up. So, since your like first led one, how did you feel? I was nervous. I was a pretty big fan of uh, Tyson Dukes. And, uh, like, talking to him, because he's done so much for Canadian wrestling and, like, every big match card on the, either, the, like, the indies or whenever he would get into, like, an Impact or WWE ring, it yeah. was always pretty big. So, it's just, like, coming in here, it's like, what can I ask him that he hasn't answered before? So, it was pretty nerve-wracking, but... I, I like that I kept it casual. I, I yeah. made it more like a podcast feel because, like, I'd rather it be like that where you're just laid back and you can just, like, have fun, basically. Like, how we're all just sharing laughs and everything during it. All right. So that's one question. The next question is, what was your first memory of visiting the cinema or movie theater and what did you watch? Uh, my first memory, actually, this might be a bit too far back for those who are less than uh, the age of, say, 27. But my first memory of, of uh, visiting the cinema was actually watching Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey in 1993. Yes, 1993. It's going back that long. It was actually quite an enjoyable movie. It was uh, it was kind of like Cats and Dogs, only it was cross-country and it was absolutely lovely. Uh, I actually watched it with my sister and her best friend. And I do miss those days of, uh, of us two going, going to watch movies. But I think the I think just time has moved on, life has moved on, and we're in different parts of England, and it's just kind of difficult to do that sort of stuff now. So, go on, Fraser. What did you first watch? What was your first memory you rem- movie you watched that you remember? Uh man, there's a few. I remember going to see the Pokemon movie with Mewtwo in it. Oh yes, ninety eight, I believe. With my cousin and my brother. Uh, I remember going to see, like, Bugs Life, uh, Itch and Cody Banks when Frankie Muniz was, like, everywhere and in everything, uh, Baby Geniuses, 
uh, Lord of the Rings. I I remember Lord of the Rings mostly because like my my uh, nana really just hated certain violent movies, uh-huh. so I I was getting lectured all the way home about it being crap and all this other stuff. <laughs> And uh, I, I remember she went to see Men in Black 2 when my cousin oh, and I gosh. went to go see another movie. And she was like, it was, I've never heard my Nana swear up until she saw that movie. Because, like, <laughs> my Nana watches, like, uh, Murder, She Wrote and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So that's why I mostly remember those. <laughs> Blimey. Murder, She Wrote, that is going back a bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so have you watched the movie you've really been looking forward to and then thought, I want to walk out? I was saying that we could apply that to a lot of things because I've actually looked been I was looking forward to Alien versus sorry, um Aliens Colonial Marines. Five years they built that up, they made it. And when it was released, I must admit I was caught up in the nostalgia of it and I didn't care about then. But looking back, it was the most god awful piece of crap gaming ever that I've played. So as far as movies go, um Avatar The Last Airbender was the one I wanted to walk out on. I I think the last thing I, to be fair, I have actually wanted to, my lady, I would actually drop her in this. She actually thought Pudsey the movie, which was based on one of the uh, Britain's Got Talent winners, would actually be a good movie. So we went to watch it, and literally it was nothing like we thought it would be. I think we spent the last half of the movie just literally on the phones doing sod all. <laughs> That's how bad it was. As for me, um, me personally, I did have high hopes for Ghost Rider, the second one, with uh, Nicolas Cage and Kieran Hines. The trailer made it look absolutely exquisite. But when you got in there, it was, it was, it was literally, all the entire movie can be described in the actual trailer. All the good bits were in, in the actual trailer itself. Rest of the movie was just god awful. I mean, not even Idris Elba could save it. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed with the first two Ghost Rider movies, and yeah, I mean, I didn't mind the first one as much, but the second one was done by Marvel Knights. Now I know all about their reputation because anyone who has seen Punisher Warzone will know how how positively good a Marvel Knights movie could be. Yes, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. But no offence, it wasn't meant to be the best. It was meant to be a bloody gore fest, which it was. So with Marvel Knights being behind that, that sort of literally put a knife in my heart even more. Yeah. Right, so we've got the... Have you... Right, so we've got the other end of the scale now. Have you watched a movie thinking you'd not like it and love it? Um, I, I can actually answer this, but I want you to go first because mine will take a bit more explaining. I actually haven't had that really. Really? Really? Because, like, I don't know, I was always watching, like, the Scream channel and, yeah. like, going to movies that, like, I actually wanted to see. Wow. First there, ladies and gentlemen, a man who has never gone into a movie thinking he wouldn't like it. But I must admit, I am probably guilty of uh, Freddy Alvarez's Evil Dead. I had so, so small hopes for it because it's it's basically remaking one of the classics that you shouldn't remake. But I, I don't know how Freddy Alvarez did it, but he made something even better than Evil Dead is. And I've never been shocked more than when that mo- when I watched that movie. I have never been shocked. More Those are than fighting that. words. Those are fighting I words. I'm going to get in, uh, Someone's going to watch this or listen to it. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, mail is mail me on uh, Twitter under Final Cut Talk and say, what do you mean Sam Raimi's Evil Dead is not as good as the remake? And I'll simply say, well, it's not. It, I just it, don't think it is. That movie set the standard for a lot of tricks that are still used in horror to this day. I know. Bruce Campbell... Like which oh God, movie? You get off the Bruce which Campbell movie, train. Which movie got a trilogy? Which one got a trilogy? The OG. All right, it is. All right, then answer this one. Why was Evil Dead Two made, which was basically a more cheesy version of Evil Dead? Technically, but, Army of Darkness, which is the third one, was the more cheesy one. The second one was I the that. first one was made independently, and then the second one is like is the sequel, which was the sequel where it was more so through studio. 
and that's why it had such a shift in budget and tone. But Which the third gosh. one is the third one is the one you're thinking that's more of the comedy one where he yeah, gets I taken to other I really enjoyed stuff. that. Oh wait, have we got another special guest with us? Yep, he's got a deck on, so it's hey, Lucia. Here he is. But yeah, the second one uh, was more of like the horror action S type. That was the one second. where he got possessed and everything. Yeah, the second one was just garbage. He got the boom, really got the chain, got to use the chainsaw and boomstick yeah. and more so. No Somebody says to me, Evil Dead 2 is good. I will just disagree with them left, right, and center. So, shall we move away from that? Because we could be going into an argument over this all day, so let's Dean's, not. Dean's opinions on Evil Dead do not reflect mine because uh, Bruce Campbell always, the man, the legend, the chin. Uh, remember, Bruce Campbell was in uh, Freddy Alvarez's remake, albeit for a few seconds, but he was still in it. It doesn't count unless he is there with the boomstick and the chainsaw, then it does See, not technically it's count. Just Right, let's move on before we literally do have an argument and force everyone to turn off. <laughs> right, so, if you could take any movie franchise and turn it into a series for Netflix or Amazon, what would it be? But for but for all extensive purposes, we will include Apple Plus, uh, HBO Max, um, Hulu, Hulu hey, hey, you, everything. We'll include everything into it, so... That is actually a good question. Um, I actually would like to take a franchise that has not finished. You could say like Divergent uh, movie franchise and sort of... T I know it's, it has been said that it's going to be done, but I don't even know if it is being done. But something something out of a movie franchise that hasn't been finished and needs finishing. So I could say Divergent, for example, but there are other stuff. I mean, like... Um, Alphas was cancelled after however many seasons it was. That never got a proper ending. Um, Angel didn't get a uh, proper ending as well. Uh, they got a continuation through uh, a comic book. I think uh, the storyline first one was uh, The Fall. Yeah. But uh, but basically something like that, that on TV or movies that hasn't had a proper ending. But that needs a proper ending to it. So what would yours be? Angel. Angel was one of my favorite shows when um yeah, I, I, I first on that. when I landed like a better job, um, my first paycheck, I actually went and bought all the Angel seasons. Yeah. Because they were on they were at a pretty decent price, so hmm. So we both agreed that's probably the one thing we'll agree on throughout all of this, because we can't agree on Evil Dead. But if oh, any I... character got a spin off on it, I, I yeah. would choose Charles Gunn. He went from yeah. just being the muscle character to being so much more, and I kind of would have liked to see more of like him hunting with his crew and everything. Yeah. Uh, right. So next question is the most overrated movie. Uh... Wait, oh, does this narrow that down if it deserves all the hype it gets, though? I think the most overrated movie is when. When when basically it's hyped up to the point where it, everyone thinks it's as good as it is, but we don't think so. So you could say Avatar because everyone had to up so much. But when you watch it, well, I don't know if everyone else feels like this, but when I watched it, granted I didn't watch it in 3D, so I never got that opportunity. But it kind of, fact that you could classify that as overhyped or overrated. Um, the Dark Knight. Oh, that. No, 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 no. Disregard that, ladies and gentlemen. He knows nothing. He's a comic book fan, and he knows nothing. And you will not insult Christopher Nolan on my show, young sir. Ah, tenets is more than enough. There's a reason. There's a reason why I think it's overhyped. It's more of like it's not like a huge thing, but. Because we know so much about Batman and his tactics, I feel like it lo he lost some of his mystique a bit. Because if he gets pwned in the movie face, and when Heath Ledger steps into every scene, he kind of he takes over, which is appropriate for the Joker. But I feel like over time, Batman, we should have kept more of the mystique with Batman. We shouldn't have seen so much of the way that he operates. Yeah, and that that's really my only complaint about it. Because like people hype up about how like everything. 
Like, even his confrontation with Two-Face, I feel like there should have been more to it instead of how shoehorned it is at the end. If, if they dedicated a little more time to that and they altered the bat suit a bit more instead of, like... Because, like, it looks kind of, like, plastically... Like, more plastic to me. Yeah. So if they just did, like, darker colors and they did, like, a few um, alterations and a bit more new tech and stuff, then uh, it would have worked better. But I, I just feel like... It, every scene Batman felt so much outmatched by the Joker and we never really got that like full on fight between them and just yeah. the clo- and at the time the movie suffered from you know when everyone was doing the up close shaky cam and you couldn't yeah. really see like the fights were like kind of like that. that's the only things that bother me about the movie besides that the movie is great but it, it does get overhyped where people like ignore some of the flaws, but there's so much good stuff in that movie that if they just altered certain colors, added a bit more to certain things then the movie would be perfect. But that's why I believe it's overrated, but it's overrated in a good way. You might not know this, but I didn't know this, but I found this out. Um, Chris Nolan is actually partially colorblind. That's why you see a lot of like blue and dark colors. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think, so that's probably, that's one reason why, um, I will admit, right, I am the biggest Chris Nolan Batman fan. I will happily admit that. Fraser knows this. Anyone who knows me knows this. But I think the movie, you could class it as being over, as overrated because it's Heath Ledger's last proper movie. That too. But, like, it's overrated in a good way because everyone hypes it up so much. But, like, it, but it's in a good way that – because there's some overrated movies that are actually good and deserve yeah. their status. But I just feel there's just little bits here and there. I feel like if they held off on Two Face and pushed him in that next movie, so instead of using yeah. um, Scarecrow for that for that uh, court scene, if it was Two Face, like if if Harvey got transformed over the years and everything, yeah. you know, like that scene in uh, what was it? I think it's Keaton's Batman where we see the court scene where he's yeah. dashing in and uh, Harvey gets splashed. Like oh, if we Batman got Forever, so, yeah, you mean that? Yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah, the Val Kilmer one. So um, if we got something like that leading into the third movie and we got Two-Face, but they, he got like more focus and everything. And if Bane kind of showed up a bit later on, I feel like it, it, it could have balanced it. But they just shoot horn two good villains in one movie and it was just too much. I am actually trying to think of an overrated movie. I'm just visually going through my uh, DVD collection. Keep in mind, I've probably watched Batman Begins like half a dozen times. Well, Batman Begins is actually quite a nice. Bearing in mind, we all thank Chris Nolan for saving the Batman franchise as it is. And obviously, if it wasn't for him, there would be no uh, DCEU, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Off the top of my head, I can't really think. I mean, the only overrated movie you could really think would be um, J.J. Abrams' uh, Star Wars uh, trilogy. Yeah. That's probably the only ones I can go for because I don't really think they're that good. A lot of people think it is good or they are good, but they're not. It's like, this is coming from a guy who was born in the 80s. So basically, I we, I sort of was in the decade of uh, not so much Star Wars, but the Empire Strikes Back and Return of a Jedi. Those for me were the yardstick. I'm sure a lot of people who are listening or watching agree with me on that. And they probably agree with you and you'll probably agree with me as well. But... Every every movie afterwards has just been dire. I mean, I would rather watch one, two, and three back to back than seven, eight, and nine. Uh, Awakens is good, but it's basically a new hope. Yeah. Uh, Last Jedi could have been better. I'm still pissed about Luke. You know, I, I a guy at my work spoiled what happened to Luke just before I went to go see the movie. Yeah, I hate I was that. stalking a shelf, and the guy like blurs it out at me, and I started yelling at him in the store. And he's yeah. like, I thought you saw it. And then he claps me on the back and he's just like, you needed to know. And it was just like, it's like, if I wasn't at work right now, I'd take you out back. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, I have done that a few times. But I do actually say, I say to people, if you're not going to watch it, let me know and I can explain how the movie goes. Majority of them are all right with it, but there is some who say, don't tell me. So I'm like, right, I don't go there. So... Oh, no, he put... blurred it out before I could say it. Like he just came yeah. up to me, and I, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go see it tonight." And then he like blurred it out. Oh god! 
I bet you, after we've done this, I'll go and have a look at my DVD collection, and I could probably name a load, to be honest. And uh, we're talking about The Rise of Skywalker. We'll be here all day, though. Yeah. I just Those last three movies were just so god-awful. All right, then. Uh, underrated movie. Well, I, I'm actually going to say that I think a lot of Asian stuff is underrated. I mean, uh, the, the Raider movies, there's one and two. I consider them to be some of the best action movies that's ever been. No offence, but I think probably the raid, is, the raid is probably one of the best action movies that's ever been made. Regardless of what country has made it, it is one of the best. It combines my love of blood and gore with extreme martial arts. I mean, the martial arts go so much and so quickly in the second one, it, you're just going like this, you're just like, what you because you're trying to keep up with everything. It's just absolutely solid. And, I mean, Parasite was released this year. It's got no end of awards and no end of uh, people who say it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it, just so you know, it, it has actually got, I don't know if it's still got it or not, but it has actually got 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not very often that happens. So I'm going to say a lot of Asian, a lot of Asian stuff, so whether it be action or horror, even Japanese horror, so... For me, I would say anything Asian because a lot of Hollywood stuff, Hollywood movies like The Ring, Dark Water's been remade from the Japanese original. I'm sure there's a Train to Busan coming at some point or something like it. But horror, Asian horror is an untapped resource that needs to be literally watched to be believed. I'm going to give it to Dread, the one with Carl Urban. Yeah, funny enough, you mentioned that. But you might not know this, but The Raid came out, I think it was about four or five months beforehand. And I did actually put this in my review when I reviewed it at the time. I would have loved it more had it not actually come out, like, say, five, six months after The Raid came out. Because The Raid, for me, set a bar for action. And as much as I do love Dread, and I love it, because Carl Urban is just way better than Sly Stallone, it's, it's not resetting the bar for me, to be honest. Yeah, but the the raid was ridiculously good. Like uh, I like Raid One better than the Raid Two. Raid Two just kind of go on a bit longer. I know that movie was classed as the Dark Knight of action movies, but and yes, there is a bigger universe to expand. But what made it what made the first one better for me was it was just set in one tower block. That's it. Everything that happened, how the villain was spot on. I would hire him in a second. I don't know if he's still alive or not. But I would hire him as my villain in a second. I mean, for those of you who haven't watched it, and by the way, don't, make sure you kids don't listen or watch this because it does tend to be a bit gory after this. What is it? There's six guys tied up, blindfold. He shoots five of them, runs out of bullets on the six, puts his gun down, grabs a hammer, and hammers him in the back of the head with it. And it's kind of like, how can you not love that? And his awesome. tone is absolutely creepy as fuck. Also, Jackie Chan's new police story is really underrated. Yeah. The uh, first sequence in that movie, uh, this bit of spoiler alert, so like if people don't want to hear it, but it's so epic that I got to talk about it. So uh, Jackie's pretty much the top cop in the city. Like he, uh, he can build like a gun super fast and everything. His squad stops pretty much every crime. He boasts basically that they're going to take them down. So they get lured into this warehouse trap. And systematically, they break Jackie. They challenge him to, like, building the gun. They challenge him, like, martial arts using his um, squad as bargaining chips. And every time Jackie comes up short and they give him a minute to, like, beat them, they drop yeah. them from the ceiling, like, killing them. And uh, honestly, I've since I grew up, like, watching Jackie Chan, I've never seen Jackie, like, go down, go down. And in this one, like, they emotionally break him. They physically break him. You see, like, some of the best fight scenes. Uh, they go to the mall near the climax. And he rematches this big guy in martial arts. They're fighting for the gun. And he's like, rematch, rematch. And they get up and they're around a ball pit and everything. You see some like Jackie's best martial art moves. Like he kicks off the wall, like doing this spin thing. Like it's yeah. such an epic movie. If you haven't watched New Police Story, I think it came out in 2004. Check it out. It's probably one of Jackie's best martial arts movies. And it's so really underrated. So basically what we're saying is watch Asian. That's basically uh, what we're saying. But pretty much, like watch Asian, <laughs> watch uh, Chinese, because like Japanese, oh, yeah, it's a Hong Kong action film, and honestly, like, like Jap like Hong Kong, Japan, China, they have some of the best movies that you don't really get to hear about. Yeah. I so mean, yeah, check that out. Um, 
there's so many good ones. But like that's probably my favorite Jackie Chan movie, next to um, Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, I'm not really a Jackie Chan fan because obviously he's done a lot of a lot of his movies that I've not really liked. But I will definitely say Raid One and Two, best move, best action movies I've watched in a, in a long time. This is coming from the guy who basically loves Batman and he thinks some of Chris Nolan's movies are the best, are the best ever made. But you can't beat a good a good martial arts movie. You just can't. You know Anyone's... what's funny though? Yeah. The Raid One could have could work as a Batman movie. It could actually. You could think about it. Um, the Raid could actually be. You know how everyone wanted like Arkham, like say the fight the fight stuff from Arkham Asylum in it. Everyone was like, "Oh, we finally get a Batman movie." Well, why don't you have a good martial artist like um, I think I'm pronouncing his name right. I've never really done it. Iko Uwais. Because I think he has a thing that's how you pronounce his name. You have someone of his martial arts talent, and to be fair, he is absolutely he is absolutely deadly as hell. Put it this way, I wouldn't meet him in a ba- in a dark alley if that's what you mean. You have him in a bat suit or someone like him in a bat suit. Can you imagine the level of absolute perfection that you would have? My co-host is concentrating, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sorry. Um, so I wrote something on a Cobra Kai page, and some guy was like responding. I I expected <laughs> a hate comment just because like it gets pretty heated on that page. Yeah, just so you know, when the Big Bang Theory says, uh, "What was it?" When uh, Sheldon came over and said about explaining Batman's origin, is like, "Oh yeah, those uh, DC fanboys can get quite heated." This is literally what it's like. This is why I tend to stay away from it because I will just go into a discussion all night about something I absolutely love. So we'll move away from the uh, overrated and underratedness. And as usual, our special guest has joined us. Right, so this is a question for both of us. You recently spoke to Phoebe from Watch Mojo. Well, we actually spoke to her last week. What was that like? Um, well, to be fair, what wasn't that like? It was cool. She was really nice. I like I have, meeting people, yeah. and they turn out to be as nice as I thought they would be, and it's actually quite nice. But what he's <laughs> neglecting to mention, ladies and gentlemen, is she is Canadian, and so is he. Yeah. So he is going to say that about a Canadian, isn't he? <laughs> now, to be fair, though, in his defence, I have been chatting to her for for a couple of, I don't know, about a couple of months. I can't really look without looking at my Twitter page. But she is absolutely lovely. And I've been trying to get her on for as long as uh, we've been doing this. So last week, and I'm I'm genuinely I genuinely mean this from the bottom of my heart. That was probably the most fun time I've had on a Sunday ever. It was a really fun episode. It was yeah we we even uh, get we even swapped our uh, body sands and dropkicks podcast because we usually do that straight after this. We swapped that for Monday night because we wanted to give Phoebe our full attention. And she and likes The Legend of Zelda, which probably made like a bunch of nerd guys like super happy and girls. Nintendo. <laughs> and Nintendo. Yeah. He actually mailed us after after that and uh he was what was it? He actually said he was quite honored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He actually found it quite funny. Well he, well. Should we gloss over that? He finds it funny, but we'll just gloss over that. Right, so... What would you like Watch Mojo to discuss on one of their episodes? Well, one of their lists, so... Uh, to be fair, that is actually a bit difficult because we actually mentioned this last week with Phoebe. She could... You could have a list... We could say a list and it could have already been done that we don't know about because Watch Mojo releases a lot every day. Um... I don't know if you could make this into a list, but I would be happy if there was kind of like a top 10 recommendations for Asian movies that everyone needs to watch. Because like we've been saying, Asia is severely underrated in the uh, movie department. I mean, no offence, but America borrows a lot of its horror from Asia, so that tells you a lot. So, yeah, I'd probably say 10 Asian movies that are underrated, I'd say. But I don't know if it's already been done. But I'll just say that because Asian, I love Asian Asian movies. I love them. So what does my co-host think of all that? 
I would like them to see them do one. I don't know if they did. Of uh, the Jackie Chan adventures, that old Jackie Chan cartoon where he's yeah. hunting the talismans and everything. They that was a really good yeah. show. Well, I don't think they've ever covered that, to my knowledge. I have. I know they, they do a lot, but I don't ever really think Jackie Chan adventures have been mentioned. So, I might mention it, Phoebe, when I get off. I would love if Jackie was voicing his own character, but he does cameo at the end of like each episode and talks about his life. But I would love to Jackie actually play Jackie in it. Now, I have a feeling my fiance has uh, borrowed from me for these next couple of questions. <laughs> so if you were to create your own movie, who would you cast? Who'd be the director and producer? And what would be the premise? Well, we know what you know what mine is because anyone who listens to me interviews knows what I what I want to do. So, but then again, Freeze, haven't you just released a comic since you literally have wrote it? Let's let's do that one. Let's uh, see what your comic book would be like if it was made into a movie. Who would you want? All right, uh, my comic's not come out yet. We are promoting it currently. It is written by. Uh, myself and my friend nick ellis the artist by uh the amazing ben c you can if you want to check out some of the art you can hit us up on instagram on gokai studios uh man this this varies because um if, if it would like it's kind of geared to, to young adults and kids mm. uh i would probably want Raimi for special effects yeah um uh, Nolan yeah, definitely has all that exposure, which would help a lot. Yeah, so it's direct, it's the cast director and producer and the premise. Well, to be fair, um, this, you've already said Nolan as director, so who would you cast? Oh man, uh, I've been watching a lot of Cobra Cry. I like Miguel, the guy that plays yeah, Miguel. I do, so I probably would cast him as um, one of the main characters. Uh, Let's see, uh, Anna Kendrick, one of the other ones, because like I love Anna Kendrick. Who, who doesn't, doesn't love Anna Kendrick? Oh, I'm sorry, the guy, the troll on the troll on a PC who doesn't like her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do not love Anna Kendrick. It's just, what is that? What, the actress who plays Shuri. I, I always forget like how right her name is. I yeah, would cast her because like I her drop in tech is just like bam, 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 like it's yeah. natural. And just a producer you need, I think, because there's a. Uh, you said director, you said cast. Uh, so yeah, producer and the premise. I think I'd cast. Um, you know, Peter Chow has been doing quite a bit of stuff, like uh, yeah. Wu Assassin. Oh, I have. He, I've watched that, and I love that. Because in the flashback, he plays one of the younger guys, even though he's like, I think he's like thirty something, but he looks yeah. really young. Uh, I would cast him too, just because like he's got a really good range. Like you've seen how he is on his own YouTube channel. You see how he is in that show, mm. and I for one of the characters, I I could believe him playing them, just because like he's got that build, and I'm pretty sure when it comes down to it, he's got like like he could do like a chill tone and stuff. So I would cast him, <clears throat> and then for um this other the mentor character, I'd have to go with Jack Black. Oh god, how can you? Do who doesn't love Jack Black? I'm sorry, the other troll who sits behind the computer and says I hate Jack Black. But how can you not like her? After seeing, like after seeing him like uh, in some of the news, like when he's more grizzled, long haired, and bearded yeah. and everything, like I would love Jack Black just because he he's like he's practically animated. He's like living animation the way he yeah. just goes from like range, like how he's in Tenacious D, School of Rock, and like. Even those Jumanji movies, like Jack yeah. Black is like it, a perfect example. And I know he has kids, so I think working on something close to young adults and kids, like he'd just have a blast because yeah. then he could show his kids. Hmm. Uh, who would you who would you have to produce it? But then again, if you're having Chris Nolan, you've got to have Emma Thomas because they come as they come in a package deal. Oh uh, man, I kind of would want Del Toro. You can have, well, you can have him supporting, can't you? Because like Del Toro, like when it comes to designing stuff. Yeah. And like his world building, like and Hellboy and like Hellboy Two, I it. really loved yeah. um the the bazaar when Hellboy and them go to the underground market. I love that scene. 
And Pan's Labyrinth's amazing. Like, my wife and I watched it together because I never saw it until she showed me. Yeah. Like, just the sets and everything and the monster designs. And that one, like, I think the hands are, like, the eyes are on the hands and stuff. Like, they just had so much atmosphere to it. Like, I'd have to have Del Toro just to have, like, that proper tone and, like, key eye of everything. Like, him and Raimi together, I feel like, would pull off, like, some of the best visuals or practicals that anyone would ever see. Yeah. That's quite a combination. So, for me, to be honest with you, I've got so many ideas for movies, it's unbelievable. But since I make a point of... um, of He-Man, I will actually try and do some of it. I'm not going to do all of it because I'll be here all day. And I'm still deciding on some. So, uh, so director and producer would be Emma, Th- Emma Thomas and Chris Nolan. Uh, the premise, well, basically the premise would be a, a trilogy regard with uh, different version with different villains, uh, namely Beastman would be the first major villain and I would have Dave Bautista for him. As for the lead roles, I'm still a bit undecided about that, but I'll just give you everyone a taster. Um, I actually have... Um, oh, who did I choose? I chose Jessica Chastain originally for, um, for Sorceress, but I've kind of decided that um, Michelle Williams would be a lot better. Because who doesn't love Michelle Williams, let's be honest. That is true. Um, as for He-Man, I'm still... I think the problem is, if I did do a she movie, which I actually have planned, uh, they would have to... Because a lot of people might not know this, but He-Man and she are twins. So the only problem is, if you cast one, you have to cast another one that's near enough the same age and look about the same, so... <coughs> I've got it down, well, I've had a few variations. I chose Dan Stevens first because he's quite good at um, playing a role that requires you to keep a secret. And uh, Geordie Alordi from uh, Kissing Booth movies. I can't believe it took me so long to really remember that. Because, yeah, he is he's a jock. He's quite muscular, quite built up. But he also has a sensitive side that he can actually use, which is which is important in that. So... So that's mine, but obviously it's still a work in progress. So, so that's that. That's that for me. Uh, right, Marvel, DC, both both offer you a job. You can accept. You can accept one and reject the other. Who do you work with? Uh, well, I've said this many a time. I've said this to everyone who asks me. I've I love Batman twenty five years, if not longer. So my first choice will always be DC, strictly because of Batman. No, there's no other way. Most of the shelf, if you look at some of the opening ones, is DC Comics. Keep in mind, I love Marvel, The Avengers, Spider-Man, but I have to go with DC Comics. They got the big boy. They got the big blue Boy Scout. They got Batman, Aquaman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter. Like I'd have yeah. to go with DC Comics. You'd have to. And the villains are a lot, not so much better, but. A Mark, would you really reject a Mark Hamill Joker? Well, my fiance, no. would. my fiance would, but we wouldn't because we're the brainier ones here. So, right, uh, one of the biggest franchises is the Fast and Furious franchise. Now, have you seen the, tra- the new trailer of Fast Nine? First opinions. Uh, okay, it's just basically another fast movie. That's all it is. I am interested to see how uh, Cypher is factored into all this and how she got uh, Dom's brother involved. And obviously, there's going to be more movies and obviously how how has uh, Han come back. But to be honest with you, it, it might as well not be any first impressions because we've got to wait, what, uh, we're not literally in October now, so November, December, January, February, March. We've got seven months to wait. I think the Fast and Furious movies need to end because now they're completely off premise and it just doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, the minute they go into space is when I officially stop because they, n- nobody should go in there. There's actually, literally even a cartoon now. Like if they haven't hit that level of like they should have 
stopped a while ago, then like nothing. Like I, it was fine with the street racing everything, but then it just yeah. kept going like overboard. All right, what is your most watched streaming service? Um, Netflix. It's a, bit di- it's, it's a bit different for me because I don't have uh, HBO Max in England yet, so obviously it might come. Uh, I'm sort of equal between Netflix and Amazon, but and I will say this, I'll say this again, Amazon has just got so much quality choices that nobody really knows about. I mean, on Prime, I looked the other day, there's Back to the Future, The Shining, Ready Player One's on there. Um, uh, the Boys is on there, which I've really been enjoying. And you should watch that if you haven't already, because it's comic book related. I don't have HBO Max, so I'm probably going to wait till like the first uh, box set drops, and then I'll probably pick it up, because I love the book. And my brother really loves it, and I usually get him like a volume almost like every birthday or Christmas. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm kind of in between Amazon and uh, Netflix. I mean, I've not really, the only time I've really watched Disney Plus was for Man for the Mandalorian, and I must admit I have been sort of watching all the DC, all the uh, Marvel animated stuff like Ninety uh, Spider Man, Fantastic Four. I must admit they I watched them twenty years ago just to brush up on all my uh, comic book knowledge and. They still stick with me because yes, they're in the nineties, but there's just so much to be learned in those in those nineties. Um, right, all right. <laughs> You're both wrestling fans. Wrestlers turned actors who are the best and worst in your personal opinions, and who would you like to see take on a more frontline role? Um, I would actually say Dave Batista's the best. I I kind of like them as. I've never really. I know Miz came from reality TV, but and I have actually stated this. Dave Batista wants to be like a proper actor, not like Dwayne, who's who's basically a sports entertainer, a comedian. Dave wants to play those like you know serious roles. That's why he's done Blade Runner forty nine, twenty forty nine. He's been cast in the new Dune movie. So for me, what makes what make why I've said Batista is quite simple. He wants to be an actor. He doesn't want to be just like like say Dwayne Johnson or Hulk Hogan. He just he wants to be Dave Batista who who learns from the best filmmakers and acts for the best filmmakers and actually wants to have a bit of range in his acting. So for me, Dave Batista, no one, no one can say anything unless some I'll tell you what, if anyone's listening or watching and they think they have a better wrestler turned actor than Dave Batista, pop your comments in the comments section below. And tell me who you think is the best wrestler turned actor. I do like that Batista gets typecast, but he thrives in it. Like he'll take whatever role and he'll, he won't be what you think it will be. And I think that's where he's really skilled. I also like the Miz though, because the Miz, he go, can go from doing the Marine movies to doing like a kid's Christmas movie. And you can just tell he's having fun. So I like to see the Miz step up like into a bigger role. Cause yeah. uh, like between him and Morrison, like when acting, I, I kind of like The Miz better, just because, yeah. like, like the, the Miz just has this interesting, like, range. And John Morrison, you could drop him in any action movie, and, like, and the, just like the guy's where you go. But, like, I just, there's something about The Miz I like. Like, I was watching, I think it's, like, um, Santa's Helper or something. Yeah, it wasn't Paige in that. I think Paige was in that. She I was uh, one of the other I elves watched trying it, to but get I knew job. that they, they promoted it quite heavily when uh, Paige was still wrestling. Um who would I like to see take on a more frontline role? Um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind uh, seeing what Charlotte Flair can do. She would be interesting because she's got the height. She's got the she's got the height. She's got the look. She's got the presence. Every, obviously, everyone would know that she's Ric Flair's daughter. But how do you know how good a wrestler's going to be unless you give him a chance in the movie? I mean, we gave Dave Bautista a chance. I mean. You've seen Blade Runner 2049, haven't you? Yeah, that was a really good movie. He was nothing... Dave Bautista was nothing but a shambolic wreck. I was absolutely stunned that he said, yes, I'll play someone like that. I will not play someone who is basically uh, angered up and will beat the hell out of anyone. He was just literally like... He literally looked like someone who was so miserable and so down that you actually felt sorry for him. I know I felt sorry for him. I thought, Jesus Christ... Right, um, 
which actor, uh, actors and actresses have shocked you the most with how good they have been in a particular role when you may have been unsure when you heard the casting news? Robert Downey Jr. and Heath Ledger for me. Hmm. Robert Downey Jr., everyone was a bit, you know, because of his past. And I know a lot of people, I must admit, I may have been one of them, was a bit unsure. Like with Heath Ledger, and the reasoning that I was unsure about Heath Ledger was not because of Jack Nicholson's show crew and all that. I didn't think he would be that good because he's more of a, he was more of a comedy actor. I mean, he was in The Knight's Tale. He was in Ten, uh, Ten Things I Hate About You. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a leap from, say, like rom com, to something as big as a Joker. But I actually uh, learned my lesson, and I don't judge. When Ben Affleck was cast, I thought everyone else was like, "Oh, he, he played Daredevil. He can't play Batman." I was actually like, "No, hold on, I'll wait and see what and see what happens." So, and lo and behold, everyone says how much of a good Batman he was. If for me, I haven't really had that for the most part. Uh, the only one I really felt like that was Ronda Rousey when she got cast in one of the Mortal Kombat games as um, Sonya Blade. And she was in Expendables as well, wasn't she? Yeah, Ronda kind of just popped up everywhere after a while. All right, opinions on the new Batman movie? I like it. I think, I must admit, I was a bit unsure about Pattinson because, let's face it, the guy from Twilight. But I have actually, I just said this, I've learned not to judge before I actually have a look. And I actually like it's sort of like a year two Batman, which is kind of like he's only what a few years into his uh, into, into his career. Not like he's not like year one where he's literally jumping head head first straight in. He's is sort of a few years, and he's just getting to learn his uh, stuff more. Uh, year one is going to be the uh, HBO Max series that yeah. they're doing, which is kind of like that Gotham Central comic. So it is going to focus more on the detective work, which actually I kind of like because that was one of the main features I felt of the Arkham Trilogy. It was more about detective work and less about beating everyone up, although obviously being a game you did have to do that. But I actually am quite curious about it. I don't agree with Zoe Kravitz as Selena Kyle because I could have named about 50 more actresses who should have done that. But... I'll wait until it's released before I decide whether I think she's a good choice or not. Uh, right, so top five streaming recommendations. Um, Cobra Kai on Netflix. We'll do five between us, shall we? So I've really been enjoying the boys. I really have. Um, for the for the Englishman who loves his uh, Top Gear, I'd recommend Top Gear and Grand Talkers. Even though a lot of the old reruns are like 10, 10, 15 years old, they're still funny as hell to na- up until now. Um, it's actually quite hard, isn't it? Yeah, I can mostly recommend stuff on Amazon Prime. So, <laughs> Yeah, I probably could as well. Netflix, I will, I will recommend Kissing Booth because, well, let's face it, what critics have said, it's not really that good. What do they know? I know better than them. It's brilliant. Go and watch both of them. So, uh, so the last one, uh, God, what is that? Should we just leave it to four? Because I'm really struggling. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it to four then. All right, what is the ultimate goal for you both? Now, I'm going to assume that she means about Final Cut and probably <laughs> Samson Drop Kicks, but to be honest with you, all I want is to deliver something to an audience that makes me proud and makes me proud to continue doing what we're doing at the minute. If millions were, if millions of pounds or in your case dollars were to come, I would welcome that. But it's not really about the money for me. It's about establishing myself and seeing what I can do and how I can push myself further. I mean, you headlined your first, uh, first podcast last week. I was quite proud of you for that. Thanks. So, um, I actually had a chat with um, Alex McCarthy from TalkSport, who is lead writer for TalkSport's coverage of WWE. I actually said to him, 
uh, teach me everything you know because if we just basically did the same thing over and over, we would there would just be no point. Einstein, I think it was, said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. So with that being said, I want to evolve into into the best interviewer, podcaster, fiance, partner. I want to I want to be the best that I physically can be and I mentally can be. So if at the end of the day, when I when we jack this in, when it's all said and done, if we say and everyone who has with who has who we've interviewed has said thank you for the thank you for all the interviews and all that you will be missed that for me is the ultimate goal to be recognized and respected that's pretty much the same goal here yeah. like we've gotten to do a lot of fun stuff so far and i and i hope mostly like when people have a rough day they throw this on and have a good laugh yeah. and have fun so I mean, mostly we... i just want to improve people's mood so they can listen to this and like have a better day basically not to uh, self promotion or anything, but if you want a good, if you want, if you actually do feel like you're having a really crappy day and you need cheering up, go and put on uh, my our uh, what, uh, Phoebe podcast because that will cheer you up no end. It's certainly it's it's been a week since we've done that, and I'm still happy every time I mention it. You'll also see my zero uh, presence when it comes to talking about people <laughs> buying clubs because I don't do that. <laughs> I don't go to clubs or anything. Neither do I. That time of my life has been and gone. So I'd be like a restaurant for Ryan Reynolds, you know, because the movie Waiting. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right then. Uh, this is a quiz for both of us. This will be the last thing because I think we've uh, spent long enough on this. Uh, right, Marvel or DC? DC. DC. Iron Man or Deadpool? So do we go with the uh, tech savvy? Uh, with the tech savvy, or do we go with the bird with the mouth? Deadpool is Canadian, but uh, I'm going with Iron Man. <laughs> I would rather have Deadpool make my life that little bit. Uh, yeah, granted, you could say that Iron Man would uh, give you tech, but the only problem is he's not indestructible. Deadpool is, so I'll say Deadpool for me. Uh, oh, God. We just mentioned Iron Man and Deadpool. The next one is Ryan Reynolds or Robert Downey Jr. to work with on a movie set. Uh, man. I, would probably, I would probably say Robert Downey Jr. because... As much as I love Ryan Reynolds, I do not want to have a uh, Hugh Jackman style feud with him because I will lose. So I will say Robert Downey Jr. simply because I do not want to have a Hugh Jackman style feud with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I I think I'd choose Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> like, um, there's some rumor that he might be coming as Green Lantern into the Snyder Cut. Oh dear. So I think uh, that did not go well the first time. No, but I think with Snyder, you can make it so much yeah. better. Just give him more of a practical suit and stuff. And if they just had him as Sinestro Clash, it would have been enough. All right, Batman or Superman? Batman. Superman. Batman. Batman. Superman. Batman. Batman is Batman. Uh, Superman's the best of us. He wants what's always the best for us. And uh, when there's like a giant meteor coming in the Earth and Dark Side, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the one guy that can like. And shatter everything. So. I've got one word for you, and you know what's coming now. Injustice. You do realize in the comics, like, Superman has Batman on the ropes the entire time and also does the Bane backbreaker breaking Bruce's back again, right? No, I didn't, but Batman is Batman. That's why he's a detective. Yeah, but realistically, he needs prep time. Like, if Superman and him just went toe-to-toe, like, Maybe first true. fight round, that like, it's over. True. But I will take Batman over anyone any day, even Iron Man. And the other thing is, Batman does not cross a certain line. He does not cross that line. He will not kill anyone where Superman has. And we know actually, has. Bruce has killed has people. He? Oh yeah, he has... you mean this? You mean in the forties when he was given two guns and just shot everyone? He also shot. Um, this is kind of spoiler for Final Crisis, so people avoid this. He also shoots Dark Side with a bullet when he decides to break his code and pulls out a gun, and I think it's like a god killing bullet. Yeah, I will grant you that. However, uh, the end. The just countless fired. people that have died because he hasn't taken out the Joker. Yeah, there is that as well. But <laughs> Superman, I think uh, Ben Affleck um, said it more evidently in Batman v Superman. What was it he said when uh, they met face to face? Is it? 
Oh yeah, it was an alien who could wipe out half the planet, I believe. But anyway, we'll can we'll move on from that because this is going to be another one of those debates that we won't. No, get. no. Here's the thing: I do like Batman, but uh, it's just like Superman. I I love Superman, like the the hope. But he, like, if he, there's some scenes you see in comics where like people are ready to jump off a ledge, and he's there like the yeah. entire time for hours. So, like he's not pulling the person off; he's like telling them like you have so much to live for, and he and like. And that kind of stuff. And that's why I love Superman. Like, you'll see him go to, like, children's hospitals. He'll even yeah. stop to, like, get a cat out of the tree for you. Like, like I love Superman. And, like, that's the kind of stuff that I love. And Bruce and, and even Bruce Swain himself has said stuff like, you know, Clark's a good person. I'm not. Yeah. And stuff like that. And I don't blame Bruce the way that he is. But, like, but when it comes down to it, like, I, I just, I like, I identify more with Superman. But I do love Batman as well. Like, they're both my, like, one and two when it comes to favorite heroes. But I, I was going to say, yeah, but the moral of the story is we both identify with each other because you identify with Superman, I identify more with Batman, to be honest. Yeah. Because that's me in a way. All right, the best and worst superhero. Now, I don't know if this means movies or not, but I'm going to guess it means superheroes considering we've just been going about Superman or Batman. Um, Who is the worst superhero? Well, you're a comic book expert. Who do know. you think's the worst one? I probably I know. Well, I don't. I'm not exactly in touch with my comic book uh, roots as Fraser is, but I don't know. Let's say I don't know, but the only, I can only comment on what I've seen, and I don't. I honestly don't know. I would literally have to go through about 900 hours of comic books to answer that question. So. I'll leave this one with you. As a team, we can answer this question. Jeez. Um, I don't think he technically counts as like a hero, but I think the person, there's a few people with like the worst abilities, like arm fall off boy. There's uh, that guy that there's that villain that can turn into ice cream. Oh God. Isn't there a ketchup villain at some point? Oh, you mean the condiment king? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, uh, arm fall off boy. I think he's go, part I'll of the Legion of Superheroes. So yeah. I'd say he's one of the worst. And uh, for villains, the guy that can turn into ice cream. I think the I think the X Men beat him by like locking him in the freezer or something. Yeah, that would work. Uh, we're not going to bother with Fast Franchise because it's well, you you're not overly a key fan of it, and I could be here all day. I will say one thing. I think Tokyo Drift is the worst, but the longer, they, the further they go on, the better it sort of gets. But we'll see how nine comes. All right. Uh, when I do my, uh, for those who don't know, I do. Uh, it's kind of like uh, Snog Marry Avoid, only it's uh, done with phone calls. So, so it, you can call someone. So you get five people ring you. You can call them, text them, uh, ignore one, delete one, and. Hold on, I've said text, call, ring, delete, and block. So, <clears throat> Michael Fraser and me, we have Vin Diesel, Ryan Reynolds, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Chris Nolan. So, who do we text, call, block, ring, and delete? Uh, do you to go first while you have a thing? Because I already know what I'm doing. All right, I'll go first. Uh, go I'll call Hemsworth. I loved him as Thor. Like, he made me actually, like, love Thor more as a character, him and uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Yeah. Oh, man. Vin Diesel plays um, Dungeons and Dragons, and I think he's part of the reason Mercer developed the Blood Hunter. So I text Vin Diesel. Oh, man. Uh,. I probably would have to block uh, Ryan Reynolds because, like, he'd, <laughs> the feuding, the feuding would never end. Do you want to know? That's what my, that's what my reason would be. I would block Ryan Reynolds simply because I want him to troll me on Twitter like he does Hugh Jackman. And then Nolan, <laughs> you just block him. You just uh, delete him, wouldn't you? Yeah, but then I I just figure like Nolan seems like the type who's too busy to pick up his phone. Yeah. And then I'd explain what the scenario I got dropped and how to do this. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, block Ryan Reynolds, which, we've, which we both agree on. Um, 
I would actually ring Chris Nolan because, yeah, he may be busy, but he is probably the best director of this generation. And if to be fair, if you ever wanted advice, he'd be the first person you ring. Uh, so I've had Block ring. I would actually text Robert Downey Jr. He's Iron Man, for God's sake. The guy, the guy is literally a walking legend and he has the best sense of humour I've ever seen. So, uh, what have I got left? I've got... Uh, Corcus Nolan, text uh, Robert Downey Jr. block. So I've got. So I block would actually and delete. block and delete. Right, I would. I would block Chris Hemsworth, but I would delete Vin Diesel. No, actually, not block. Um, I block Ryan Reynolds. I would delete Chris Hemsworth. Hold on, text call block. Hold on, mate. Right, so texting, I would do. Text, uh, text Robert Downey Jr., call Chris Nolan, block Ryan Reynolds, ring Vin Diesel, and delete Chris Hemsworth. And uh, suffice to say, this is, I don't want anyone saying this is a sexist one, because it's not, because we ha I have five female names here. And uh, I, this is actually worse for me, because there's actually an, Eng there's an English woman in this, but there isn't, and as far as I'm aware, there's no Canadians in this for you. There is a few Aussies though. So, so the five females are as follows. Uh, Sucker Punches, Emily Browning. Uh, act actress turned singer, Hayley Steinfeld. Anna Kendrick. <laughs> exactly, that's how I feel. Uh, Daenerys Targaryen herself, Emily Clark, Amelia Clark, sorry, and uh, Margot Robbie, a la Harley Quinn. So, Right, I'm going to get these out of the way. I would call Emily Browning simply because <laughs> if I had any young kids around me and they needed to go to sleep, I would call. She would sing them to sleep, literally. Uh, Hayley Steinfeld, I... Oh, actually, no, no, no. Oh, this is so difficult. Um, oh, which is actually quite hard. I would delete Anna Kendrick simply because she is like a female Ryan Reynolds, so she would not leave me alone whatsoever. Uh, so, who would I ring? I would ring Emi Emi sorry, Emily Browning. I would... I'll probably delete Margot Robbie, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Sacrifices must be made, my friend. Margot, if you're watching, I love you immensely, but I'm sorry, but I just can't. So, so I text Amelia Clark. I would call Emily Browning. I would ring Hayley Steinfeld, and I would block Anna Kendrick. Wow. I know. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we have to sacrifice some things, and I would rather sacrifice Margot Robbie than Emily Browning. It's not as if I'm being being a country or so anything, because I'm literally dumping an Aussie for an Aussie. So, so go on then. What, what are you doing? All right. Well, without a show, I would tell it I'm calling Anna Kendrick. Bad blocker. No, I go. I'd call her. <laughs> like I love everything she's in. I remember her whole thing about Squirrel Girl. She's like, yeah, I can play a squirrel. Yeah. I wish she became Squirrel Girl because it got so much attention. Uh, yeah, you might have hope yet, sir. She's uh, only in the early 30s. She's still got plenty of time left. She looks so much younger, though. I know. She is that. And, and by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am actually being quite honest. I have said she is the definition of perfection because she's absolutely gorgeous to look at. She's got a lovely body. She's got a great sense of humor. She can sing. Literally, this woman can't. There's nothing this woman cannot do. And I blocked her. Uh, I'd, have the text, I'd have the text Emily Browning. My wife loves Emily Browning and she never forgive me if I like deleted or blocked her. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Uh, I don't really know who Hayley Steinfeld is an actress and a singer. She's uh, she's been in Pitch Perfect if you've watched them. So I'd block her, and I'd delete Margaret Robbie. I don't know if she... 
I don't know who she is. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen. Absolute shock that he is. Hey, you know Haley Steinfeld is actually one of the nicest, nicest people in Hollywood. Yeah, but I don't know who she is. Fair so enough, I can't, fair enough, I can't technically like give a full answer of enough. like a proper for her, because then it'd be unintentional favoritism because of my co host and we don't do that here. So and I, I honestly if I knew she who she was. It would have been a bit rougher, but like I, I have no idea who she is, and I'm probably gonna get in a lot of heat later for that. But <laughs> to be fair, I should just point out, ladies and gentlemen, these, this is actually quite a hard list. It's not just we've only literally fa- found these out what ten minutes before we started, and we've only just literally got down here. So, in 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 uh, regards, it is actually quite tough. So, so yeah. So where we got we block Margot Robbie. Uh, to Lee Hayes Steinfeld, uh, what did you say for Emily Browning? Oh, I text Emily Browning back. Text Emily Browning. Uh, Anna Kendrick was. Anna Kendrick was call. Uh, so you would text Amelia Clark. No, I, I texted Emily Browning. Emily Browning. So so you'd ring Amelia Clark. And I delete Robbie. Yeah. And um, block. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen. What we're actually saying here is if you have some of the most beautiful and talented women in Hollywood, make sure you delete Margot Robbie. (laughs) That's basically what we're saying. That's the advice we're (laughs) distributing. But just to be fair, um, we do love every single actress and actor on this list, and it is amazingly hard for us. I've only really seen her in, like, um, Suicide Squad, and I thought she was really good in that. But then you throw like Emily Browning in there and Anna Kendrick, and it's just like I, Emily I can't Browning exactly. is the definition of the woman, the girl you could take home to your mother or father, and they would just be so much in love that you, they wouldn't care. They'd just be like, right, yeah, I agree, I agree. You can marry that woman if you want. She's That's so what I'm with my wife. <laughs> when Ooh. I brought my wife home, Ouch. my mom called it before I even knew it. Where she told. Uh, my wife that she was going to be her daughter-in-law one day. My wife's like, oh, I don't believe in marriage. And here I am married four years later. Four yeah. years married together almost for six years. Thing is, ladies and gentlemen, everyone says we don't want to get married. But my best mate, and this is, was his stance truthfully, he said marriage is just a piece of paper. And now do you want to know what he's doing? He's get married. married. He's married. He has one little son who is absolutely gorgeous. And he has a daughter on the way. So... With that regards, congratulations to him and to uh, Hannah, his missus. Although I do feel sorry for I do feel sorry for him because he's having a daughter. But to be fair, he is actually quite good with speeches. So he's actually said he's looking forward to when his daughter gets married. I'm kind of like he won't be saying that when he's got when uh, she's got other boyfriends coming over to tea. He's giving her the dead eye. No one ever likes that, right? Last question, so we can stop boring everyone who is basically the one viewer that's still listening. Uh, right. You're pitching your movie or comic book to a movie director. Who do you go to? I already did that. mine earlier, yeah. so... I've got, to be honest with you, I've got four or five movies of various genres that I actually have, but for movies, sorry, for horror, I would go to either Sam Raimi or Freddy Alvarez, or both even. Uh, Chris Nolan, James Cameron. I know it says only one, but the only problem is, how can you ignore all the all the, all the caliber uh, level of directors you have? One fit one I would not ask is Michael Bay because Michael Bay just is Michael Bay is known for one thing and one thing alone: action. He's not really known for anything else. So. <sighs> I think we survive that, mate. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure there'll be some uh, complaints on my Twitter saying, why did you choose that one over me? But we'll get over that anyway. We always do. So on that rather excruciating uh, final quiz, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching or listening. If And you can always catch us on Spotify, Apple, Apple Music, and just about every single streaming platform you can think of. You'll find us on YouTube. And you'll find us on social media, where you will find me under Final Cut Talk on Instagram, on Instagram, Twitter, I'm on Facebook under Final Cut Reviews, and I'm also on Twitter under Final Cut Gaming, where I tend to just be a bit more mouthy than I am on uh, movies. So 
Mikey. You can find me on Instagram at beautiful Michael on Twitter, a five star wild card. Uh, I'm also writing a comic book with my friends, which has been mentioned earlier. And you can find us on Instagram at Gokai Studios. And now I get to do the whole shameless promotion part of this episode. <laughs> do you like the paranormal? Do you wonder what goes bump in the night and uh, who bumps back? Then check out the paranormal patrollers. And on that self promotion, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening and watching. And we will hopefully see you next time.